Yo, how's it going, my fellow revelers? Welcome back to another episode of the Festi Hub Podcast. I'm your host, Manny, aka Frisky Hug. And today's guest, we have Dosk on the podcast. He's a DJ based out of Philadelphia. Um, just recently, he played at Thon. It was a venue um, over at Penn State. I covered like it was like 7,000 people or something like that. So I was like, when I saw that, I was like, bro, I got to have you on the podcast. We got to talk, um, you know, just because like the nervousness of somebody playing with that, that, that many people. And then also um, the event was like a charity event. So, I mean, every, everything about it was just super cool. I saw it in a story and I was like, listen, man, I got to have you on. I think this is just a really cool thing that happened. Really cool thing that you did. A really cool like event altogether. Let, let's get to know you a little bit better and let's just get you on the podcast so honestly the whole episode was just fucking fantastic um but you know we'll talk about the podcast during the podcast for right now let's go ahead and move to our four shout outs of the week uh first one's gonna go to a content creator we're gonna shout out spirit shell um i bumped into her at okeechobee she was doing an instagram takeover for Relita couture and uh, such a sweet person very down to earth um great content creator and i just wanted to give her the recognition that she deserves um so yeah she gets a slot for one uh for the shout out uh for number two we're gonna have a dj and we're gonna go ahead and shout out cello cello is based out of tampa um he plays a lot in tampa and a lot in orlando mostly in florida i mean this guy has played in festivals uh he's played at large shows has opened for amazing huge artist just the other day uh he opened up for well he didn't open up but he played with Shaq um so that was pretty cool to see I saw like on the Instagram story and like Shaq was like telling him to go on go ahead like go on I'm like what the hell is going on over here this is so badass um it, you know me and Cello we first met over at one of the um, one of the clubs it was I think uh, Nitty Gritty was playing and I was like bro you just look familiar man I could have sworn I've seen you somewhere so it was really cool like uh, getting to know him and like you know um, becoming friends so shout out goes to Cellos um, you know keep doing your fucking work my, my boy it's gonna pay off one day um, honestly it feels like it's already paying off already like you're you're getting there man um, but anyways yeah keep it up man and then the shout out for number three is going to be to a brand or business. And we're going to go ahead and shout out uh, Midnight Company. They're the ones that got me this really cool light up jacket. Um, I If I had gone to Ultra, I'd be wearing this at Ultra, uh, but I will be wearing this at one of the um, pool parties. It's the Ajuna Beats pool party on Sunday. So if you guys are around, you guys want to go hang out with me, take a shot with me. I'll be at the Ajuna Beats pool party. I think it's a pool party. It better be a pool party. Um, yeah, that's Sunday. Hit me up. Let's hang out. Um, that's the only thing I think I'm doing during Miami Music Week. So, and uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, all four shout outs are going to be in the description below. Go ahead and check them out. But yeah, I, I should have a code for uh, Midnight Company soon. I don't know if I have it already. Um, try Frisky Hug, see if that works. <laughs> Uh, okay, shout out number four is going to go to a friend and follower. That's going to go to my roommate, Diego Armand. Um, he's the second half of Nocturnal Sounds. We, basically, both my roommates make up Nocturnal Sounds. Um, Diego has been in the you know EDM scene for a while. He's a DJ here. Um, he's coming up with a new song soon. Um, really great dude. Really great roommate. Um, and he's done a lot of good things for the community, I promise. So all those four shout outs. Definitely give them a look. See, I promise you, I'm not staring you wrong. All these are just great human beings. Um, but that that's it for the four shout outs. Um, as of for like things that I got going on for myself personally and stuff like that. Like I said, Miami Music Week, I'm only doing the Junior Beats Pool Party. Shout out Blank Cavis and shout out to the Festival Base for hooking it up. Um, they're the reason I'm going. Otherwise, I wouldn't be going at all. Um, I'm not going to Ultra. Uh, and I got friends coming into town and I really want to, you know, give them some of my attention. I barely see them and they mean a lot to me. So I really want to just dedicate my time towards my friends. Um, and then my first upcoming festival is going to be, we got Glow Music Festival over in Washington, D.C. The My friends that are coming over, they're actually the ones hosting me. Um, and I'm only going for day one. I'll be in town the day before that. So if anyone's in town, like definitely hit me up. I'll just be, you know, roaming around downtown or, you know, grabbing some drinks, some of the clubs or whatever. Um, so yeah, we got Project uh, Glow Festival. And I think we got like the Candy Bar crew that's going to be dropping by a couple content creators, a couple YouTubers. I think Emma Capote is going to be there. Um, my my boy, uh, Bassmaster Rush is going to be there. Um 
gosh, I could, I'm trying to remember what other content creators are going to be there. It's just an overwhelming amount of them. And I can't think now. So there's a lot, I promise. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it for the festival that's coming up next. And then today, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it in the YouTube video, but I got like purple hair. I got the lighted jacket. I got the Fessia podcast shirt on. I am going to Project Afterglow. It's a small event here in Orlando. Um, the All Access crew and my boys, Nocturnal Sounds, they're the ones kind of hosting the event. Um, All Access crew kind of like hosting it. They're just collaborating with Nocturnal Sounds. Um, we're about to leave soon. We got to get there super early to kind of help set up and stuff like that. Um, really excited to see the turnout of this event. I mean, they they throw some pretty good events from what I've been seeing, and this is the first time that I've been I've been like, okay, I'm like all in. I'm going full promotional on you guys. So hopefully that helped a little bit. Okie dokie. So that is everything I think for the intro. I can't think of anything else right now. Um, so let's go ahead and just start with the podcast. Like I said, we got DJ Dosk. Yo, how's it going, everyone? So I would like to welcome Dosk to the podcast. Hello, hello, everybody. So me and Dosk, we've been online friends um, for a bit now. Um, you know, I love watching him st his stuff. I, I definitely like this last story that he got caught me off guard. I'm like, what? Like you performed it for like thousands of people. This is so bad. Like I got to have you in the podcast. I, we we got to talk. So, you know, this is like a last minute thing. I had somebody cancel uh, their four o'clock and I was like, I have a four o'clock if you want to make that, you know, so we just like did a quick substitute. Um, but Dosk, uh, as you know, I actually know uh, only a little bit about you, so I guess we'll both learn, the audience and I. Um, if you want to just give us an intro by yourself. Yeah, so my name is Dosk. Uh, I'm a DJ producer out of Philadelphia, and I make mashups, original music, uh, a lot of quick edits, and I like to throw down with my team. My team can, uh, is consisted of a whole lighting production guy. I have, like, a live mascot that comes out, and, you know, all my team just likes to travel the country and hopefully soon Europe and just have a good time, throw down and make people dance. What got you started to like, you know, do this? So I was like, my, I was always growing up in the music like world. My dad's a music producer. Um, so I kind of like followed his footsteps in a way, not the same genre, but like still a music world. Yeah, what's he do? So he was a producer for The Roots back in the 90s out of Philly. And Erica Badu, like good R&B, neo soul type of stuff in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, that's kind of how like, he made his name in the city. And then growing up um just kind of like watching how he worked he then moved to like rock and roll jazz and I got all these different kind of mm -hmm. musical flavors around me and then that kind of let me in college more goes go towards EDM and I had all these other elements growing up that I wanted to yeah. fuse all together so that's why mashing up stuff to me is my favorite thing just because that's how I grew up just all these different genres around me put together to make it sound good when did you start like mashing up songs like when did that start yeah so Basically, I started DJing at parties when I was 17, 18 years old in college. And that was when I just went to house parties and I was mm -hmm. just like, I can do way better than this. So yeah. try it out. And then I basically almost got addicted to it. I was trying, then I was like, hey, this is actually, you know, a good hobby of mine. And I started charging like 50 bucks, 100 bucks for the night, like just trying to get money out of it. And then it kind of was like kind of stagnant in that way, like the same old house parties, mm -hmm. like some frat parties, just like. All this other, and then it happened when I was in Rome, um, my junior year. Wait, what you know, the, the fuck were you doing in Rome? <laughs> so, well, it's the classic like study abroad, you know, the whole like I studied abroad over there through Temple University out of Philly. And um, it was the same thing, kind of went yeah. to a club and I told the guy like, I can do better than this, this is kind of weak. Yeah. And then he gave me a shot. And then the whole semester I was making way more money doing that and just being a student and a nighttime DJ. And I was just like, damn. Just kind you of know, like, I mean, $50 though, is like, it's, it's a really good starting off though. Like, honestly, like not knowing kind of what you're doing, you're kind of just, you know, getting your feet wet. $50 is actually pretty good. Some people actually pay like 25. Sometimes people will be like, I'll just let you play for free. So you get experience. Right. So the fact that you got paid. So, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I guess that helps having a parent in the music industry where it's like, yo, if you're going to do this, like just get some money out of it. It's not like they don't have it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it, was, it was like four or five hour sets. So it's like, I'm just sitting there wasting a good Friday night, you know, how to make it somewhat worthwhile. But the Rome thing was kind of crazy because that's when it was more professional outing. It's not like a house party. It's like an actual club or big bar. And that's when they started to, they, I think they were lowballing me at the time, but I was just happy getting like 300 euros. I was like, yeah, like sign me up. Like, you know, so that was easy for me. And that was just a crazy, that's kind of when the whole world kind of changed my view of like, all right, I can probably take this more seriously and go all in. 
Yeah, man. I feel like, well, 300 euros. What is that in US dollars? Like what, 250? At the time, no, at the time, it's actually it's more. more. It's like, oh, shit. yeah, it was like 325, 330. I don't know what it is now, but usually the euro is a little like stronger. Um, yeah, so I was just like, it was kind of a weird, crazy world because I was just uh-huh. like doing what I've been doing at college just for, you know, a little bit of money, more fun. And then it was like, whoa, this is like real money now to me at the time yeah. like coming in. And they basically pushed me to like, yo, you need like a stage name. You need like mm-hmm. a logo. And they, I was just like, damn, man, I'm just the, like the out The pieces here. start like, you know, the whole puzzle pieces start making an actual like design. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. This is like real. Like this is like. Yeah, <laughs> it got real pretty fast. And they were just like, you know, and I'm just, I don't even know Italian that much. And they're just like, tell me you need logo. You need name. Like, dude, yeah, it all hits you at once, bro. And you're like, you don't yeah. have time to think. You just have to tell like, I gotta, I gotta get this stuff done, but it's so hard. How do you like come up with a good logo and then not change it like midway right same thing with like right. meme and my brand i had like my frisky hug logo and then i was like i am like oh fuck i need a better one. Oh, i need a better one like i don't have to kind of time now i'm like you know when we talk about rebranding we're well, not rebranding but like you know re re-imaging or we just redoing your image and stuff right um i was talking to one of my friends and i was like i like my frisky hug logo but i want to have a more of like a dubstep rhythm logo something just black and white very like eh. You know, so I was talking to her like, I want to have like two types of designs, one a little bit more friendly, one like very like dark and like, you know, whatever. Because I, I um, sometimes when you're like all over the scene, you want to basically acclimate to those scenes. Um, but I mean, I love your logo. Your logo is pretty sick. Just like the. So basically the name part, my last name is Das Kiss, D-O-S-K-I-C-Z. My nickname growing up was Das. And I was like, well, mm-hmm. this seems pretty short and sweet. And then. I was always told like, you know, through, you know, school and also my dad, like make your logo something that resembles what you are, what you do. So I was like, all right. So I looked at the O and I was like, well, if I like EDM, I'm just like, let's make it a power button. Electricity, like electronic, like, I don't know, let's just go with it. And then my friend to this day, like, I was like, yo, $50, you make this logo. Here's, I saw a power button online. I was like, yo, just have the same kind of font, send it to me. And ever since that day, it's the same logo going forward. Doesn't Ultra have the same power button? <laughs> I know. That's the thing. I wasn't like... Don't get sued. So, yeah, I was so consumed in my world. And I just didn't even think about the other people that yeah. might have used similar stuff. Yeah. And I was just like... Because at the time, things was moving quick. And I was mm-hmm. just, all right, I just need something that represents my name. And then, yeah, going forward, you notice a lot of people use the power button different ways. But yeah. I was like, hey, well, I have that. Well, Ultra. <laughs> luckily you're using it in dosk right so it's not like you're only using the power button right so as long as you have like dosk in there you're not really like you know stepping yeah like no people's... one can just take a general image like that's like part of like the copyright thing it's like you can't mm-hmm. take a general term or image and coin it yours so yeah. a power button is so universal no one can just own it you know what i mean so that's why anyone can really use it so like the festi hub podcast um i my original design was you know to kind of act like kind of use like the Pornhub logo stuff whatever so I used it basically uh, an orange block and then somebody like brought it to my attention like hey like your podcast is getting like it's getting traction like people are noticing it like DJs are noticing it like it's, it's gonna get big it's only gonna get bigger from here on out he's like my recommendation change the fucking logo like I don't think Pornhub's gonna like like sue you or anything but why take that risk and I was like dude honestly yeah. you're right like might as well yeah. do it now before everything starts getting a bit more and more like I mean, I'm getting literal like messages from like, you know, way bigger influencers and DJs, you know, like they're like, hey, like I want to be a part of this, you know, like, you know, so like I know it's getting bigger. So like you, you're right. Like, you know, sky's the limit. Let's make sure we cover our tracks. So I've kind of just redid my entire just the way you just do things. I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, the thing is like a lot of the people that use that, like the Pornhub box or like another mm-hmm. company kind of, like, as a play on that. Yeah, it definitely works in the beginning. And it like definitely helps with traction, but of yeah. course you open yourself up down the line where it's exactly. like, all right, now it's like getting too big. And now other people start to notice and you're like, fuck, now yeah. I gotta like eat this. So that's why like when I did the original logo, I just wanted something mm. that was true to me. Yep. So I just really used my name yeah. and I just swapped some one thing out to make it like a logo. And I was just like, well, the power button's pretty general. No one can really take that for themselves. I was like, all right, let's do it and keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah, you always gotta like make sure uh, like the names as well. Um, my friend Armistice, she's a she was an influencer called Deepler Princess. She changed when she started DJing to Armistice, and I told oh, her. Oh yeah, like, I know her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah super sweet. Um, and uh, we just hung out yesterday. Um, but when I was talking to her about her name Armistice, I'm like, Have you ever Googled yourself? And 
you know, that's like basic 101. Have you Googled yourself? She goes, oh, I haven't. Like, let's do it now. Um, there is an actual band called Armistice. I'm like, you need to be careful <laughs> because my, I, I don't know. What kind of genres do you play? So it really depends. Like, as I'm going further in my career, I want to stick to more of like house and future bass with my two favorites to play. Mm -hmm. Like I try to long story. I try to like try to hit as many sub genres as I can that, that I like, because I want to make it more genuine, not just like play with people. I think people will like, but more like what I'm trying to represent myself musically as. Mm -hmm. So my two favorite genres to play is house and future bass. And then that kind of makes me go from a high energy, like 120 BPM mm -hmm. and I can slow it down a little bit with the future stuff and then raise it back up. So I kind of like my sets going like energy wise up and down to try and make a story out of it. So my two, those are my two genres going forward. But in my lifetime, I played whatever genre under the sun. So yeah. really whatever. But that's where I really want to go more tours than I've been doing lately. Well, especially with like gigs, right? You want to make sure you're available to play at any venue. You don't want to be limited, right? Um, exactly. You know, you know, Zoop's tool, right? Yep. Yeah. So like, you know, he, he normally just plays like dubstep and stuff like that. And one time I invited him to a techno house, a warehouse, um, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, like I wanted you to play. I thought this was going to be a dubstep show. My buddies are telling me this is actually a house show. He's like, oh, I got a house USB. <laughs> I'm like, yep. okay, let's fucking I mean, do That's something. what you got to do. I mean, you got to do it because if you're like, so my, when I look at the people I look at as musical influences, I see like Skrillex, obviously DJ Snake, and I see Martin Garrix, mm -hmm. and then like Lenny, like all the big dudes, right? But, and another person I really look at as like a person that I want to model off of is like Nitty Groove. Gritty, where mm -hmm. Nitty Gritty can walk in and play basically whatever, because like he has that deep knowledge of even, you know, house with side piece and all that stuff. And then he can do like the future based stuff and he can do like dubstep stuff. So like my thing is to be as if you can be as broad as possible without compromising the, sh the taste that you have. Mm -hmm. I think mean, it's the most successful because I, I want people to come to a show of mine and be like different kind of walks of earth when it comes to genres they listen to and they come to my show and now it's like a whole big you know family almost yeah it's like well hold on let, let me mm, okay i'm trying to i'm not trying to steer away from what i was trying to say oh, no, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna go back real quick to what i was initially trying to say um so mastodon uh now uh Marada. So he had an issue where a rock band was getting tagged like insanely amounts. Right. So like, like I was doing it too. I was tagging the wrong person. I was wrong. I was tagging the rock band instead of the actual DJ. And they're like, Hey, cease and desist. We will sue. Like you can't be taking our name. Like we've yep. been here for 15 years. You, you know, we're actually like trademarked. You need to like change your name. So he changed his name, you know, like basically got bullied into changing his name and it is what it is. And it makes sense. Right. Cause I mean, you could stick with uh, Mastodon, but it has to be like Mastodon DJ or, or something where like it's not so it's not so similar. Yep. No, it's crazy because you can be the biggest act in the world. But if a small town local act got this trademark, you know, years ago, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how big you are. The law is the law. You got to change that stuff ASAP. And like obviously having a, a dad that was in the business and knows all the horror stories of copyright law and like trademarks, he was like just making more genuine to yourself. And it's hard to like. So that's why I did my last name to make sure that if there ever came a problem, it's short, sweet, and not a very popular last name. Yeah, uh, it's like Polish, but like it's also changed up. So like I try to make it as genuine as possible to hope. And then obviously, did rate crazy. Re Google yourself all the time to make sure you're not slipping up. And then yeah, same thing. Anyone can fall. Anyone has to change it, no matter how big you are. Someone already trademarked it. What's uh, what's your ancestry? Are you, you guys Polish? Uh, so my grandfather was Polish. Grandmother Russian. Uh, Russian Ukraine, and then and then my mom's side is just like a mix of <laughs> just mom's so side is just like a whole mix of like European stuff. So, but primarily like Polish, Russian, Ukraine. That's basically why I basically have more features of. Yeah, how old are you, anyways? I'm 26. 26, man, damn. I, I've been uh, I've been DJing since I was 17, making music since I was like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, just basically ever since I got out of college, it was I had two choices. One workforce and the try grind it that way just go all in i went all in and it's been working out ever since luckily like through a lot of failures learning from yeah. them and learning to build my career up and up and then yeah it's basically where i'm at today it's just a constant hamster wheel of working on music working on mixes getting shows promoting myself trying to do more creative content on socials it's just a constant hamster yeah. wheel do you wait so you only play music this is all you do 
Uh, or do you so, have like, a, like, a, like another job? Pandemic, it was all I did. Okay. Pandemic, there was no shows, and I was like, facts. <laughs> no money. Yeah. Facts. So now what I do is remotely. Uh, I help other companies basically run their socials or like give mm-hmm. them advice on social media how to grow their brand stuff like that. So now coming out of the pandemic, I still basically have two full-time jobs, which is the helping the companies brand other artists, pay me to help their branding. Mm-hmm. It's like all this, basically, I guess, branding consultant, you could probably call it. And then also DJ and produce full-time. So when I wake up to when I go to bed, it's just always working on something. Yeah, man. Um, so like most of your gigs, are they like uh, from like the Penn State area or do you have, do you like perform at like local shows or, or do you perform at clubs? Like what, what's, what's like your performance area? So, so I basically have been tapped into the college market more recently because that's mm-hmm. kind of where I'm just getting the most traction. So like, I've been obviously on this tour I'm on right now, like the big 10 tour, it's like, you know, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, Indiana, Penn state, and hopefully a place in Chicago for Northwestern and just trying to create that, um, college following kind of like in the way two friends with the big booty mix and stuff mm-hmm. like that like yep. getting rituals and mixes out and that kind of because like with college kids like they share a lot of music really fast like that market like just if you have a pop and song it'll take over the whole canvas in less than a i week. mean chain smokers did it man exactly it's <laughs> like it, and the formula never dies because it, it college is kind of is like this big center where people from all across the state and country just live in this little town and then they just all like talk to each other and like party with each other. And then what else do you have that kind of like mm-hmm. sharing of information? You know what I mean? So that's where I'm at recently. But I mean, I've played at clubs, you know, in major cities. I've played clubs in Europe, in Prague, Barcelona, obviously Rome, Florence. So as this gets bigger, my goal is to get out of the college market and be more of a national worldwide mm-hmm. kind of like sense of a name and music. But as of right now, trying to still trying to get that underground bit not underground but like that underlying base i do the colleges right now predominantly i mean steve aoki i mean played at like one, one of my colleges before you know like college is a yeah. huge like avenue oh, the book for, so it goes back at 40 they all go back i mean they all go back to colleges it's just like it's always you know as edm that's a big market huge i mean you're talking about a university where you're gonna have at minimum like three thousand people you know listening to you it's Heavy. so so easy and i'm like um and i was really impressed man i like when uh, i think it was called the penn state-a-thon right is that what you performed last thon. oh yeah talk thon. about that for a little bit and that was uh that was pretty cool yeah that was so that's actually pretty yeah that is pretty crazy so thon is basically like penn state's biggest uh charitable dance marathon and it's basically their bryce jordan center holds like fifteen thousand people and all these kids basically stand up and try and do a live donation fund for 46 hours. I mean, they, they try and get donations throughout the year, but for 46 hours, they all get in the, in the Bryce Jordan center and like dance to help kids with childhood cancer and like donate to their families and other families across the nation and raise money for a great cause, obviously. So, yeah, so I've been doing that for like, they've always had me involved, but this time they gave me like a big, a big show set. So it was like, Hey, we want you the first night. We want you right at 1 a.m., like right when the kids is like usually going out. We want you for 40 minutes. And I was like, damn, okay, that's cool. Now, with Thon, you, I mean, they really want clean mixes and music, yeah. right? Kids, and it's like live stream on news stations. And so it's like, I can't go in there, <laughs> break your fucking next mom, but I can't really do it. <laughs> like, that really wouldn't work out. And, uh, yeah, so I so you really like a you like a top forty mix type of yeah, more like like again a lot of like throwbacks too and yeah. like remix them as house songs and high energetic like I had even the good for you like good for you by uh, Livia Rodriguez like basically you I have to edit that only take the kind of it's kind of weird how I did it, it's a long story but she curses sometimes in there but you have to kind of have to like redo her verse to make it seem like she's not and then it's a very unique science of like not just not just blanking out the word but act like she never said it at all. Yeah. And so because I don't even think they, I don't even risk it, but I don't, I don't even think they approve of this editing this, the word out. You know what I mean? Cause it's almost like, it's, in, it's like almost too obvious the word is out and they don't want anything to do with curses or anything. So it's kind of, the longer the set would be more difficult for me because a lot of my stuff is not for that. So I learned to get around it though. And luckily like everyone loved it. And it was like crazy energy. It was like about 11,000 people in there at the time I went on. Have you ever played for like something that big before? Honestly, I would just compare it to European clubs or like 2000 mm-hmm. people like they're pretty nuts. And 
there's like a story when Diplo had his festival here, Mad Decent Festival here. I think it was like 20, probably like 2015, I think it was. And uh, I was there helping out a friend, uh, basically DJ with him. And uh, this is when I really first started getting into it. And like, I didn't know how to use CDJs, the festival standard. I had my yep. board. And I was like trying to make it work. And totally went on there. We had like a 15 minute slot. Totally went on there. Totally didn't work. Had no idea how to use the equipment. <laughs> that sucks. We're, like, we're not hooking this up for you. Like use the CDJs. I'm like, damn. So it was like a complete awkward silence for 15 minutes. I had to get out the stage. I was like, and that was like 7,000 people. So that was like traumatic. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I like my biggest, Don is definitely my biggest show probably in front of that many people. What do you like used to like play with or like, I guess, mix with at home? Yeah. So for all the DJs starting out, I did virtual DJ when I was 17, 18 years old. And that's literally like, you get a mouse, you just like move <laughs> the fader over and then move the fader over. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, it was basically like a glorified just playlist pusher. I'm just like, yeah, b- okay. basically your laptop. <laughs> Right. That was like, that's probably why, you know, you only get 50 bucks because it's like, that's all you're doing. So uh, then I graduated to a uh, board when I was in the middle of college. It was like a DDJ SX2. So it's like, still need a laptop and still need the board and stuff like that. Wait, so you had an RX2 that you started with? Yeah, we, we so, literally we literally have one downstairs at the house. This is what we like party with at the house. <laughs> that's and that literally it's crazy because being honest, that's all a lot of DJs really need. Like it still has four decks on it. You can still do whatever you got to do on that. I know yep. Zed tours with a freaking board like this big. So I mean, if you're just playing two songs, then that's really all you need. But you know, you got to use the whole CDJs, make it look crazy. I, so. I mean, here at the Vanguard in Orlando, man, they have six CDJs, six or eight. I can't remember. You know, it's like because they, they plan doing like back to back to backs and you got all the. Yeah. Now, yeah. If you're getting more people involved, I understand where you need like six decks. But like usually if it's one person, like you really don't need, unless you're doing like crazy matchups. But even the boards now have four decks on them. You just got to like yep. just press buttons for it. So it's not that difficult. But yeah. So that then after the Diplo thing happened, I was like, yeah, I should probably learn how to use these. So I had to save up, go in debt and get, you know two cdjs and a mixer it was like six grand i was like damn now i've really got to bust my ass yeah, man. It because it's like a huge investment and it's crazy that those things are such staples that they're still six grand like that setup is still like, i know they just released the three thousands but you go online right now and cdj like that is still two thousand dollars and that's been out yeah. for like 10 years like it's crazy they still have like a, they still have a cd input for it like you know that's how old they are and they're still worth two grand so it just goes to show that those things really are like the club staples but it was confusing at first, but then when you learn it and then I'm just like playing on them all the time now, it's just like, sure. well, you own them now, right? So yeah, it helps so- a lot. I will say owning them. I mean, I would probably, if you don't need to spend six grand, honestly, if you guys have a guitar center or somewhere that just has them, I would definitely just practice on them for like 10 minutes at a time if they let you. And like, I think now, even, even for me right now, I just got this, uh, this. so I had, so I actually, so I had the DDJ SX2, and now I basically got to travel. Because, like, when I'm traveling to other shows, sometimes these venues and shows are, like, bullshit. Like, I don't know. I'm traveling with six grand worth of stuff, and anyone can just come in and spill a drink on it. I'm like, Dude, oh, my God. I can't do that. Like, I can't. Like, it's too much of a risk of $6,000 mm-hmm. to have some idiot just yeah, bro. all that. You have you mean? seen those videos, dude, of, like, people yes. like- dude it's it's traumatizing and my heart is just like oh my god like it's crazy they don't understand how much like that shit actually costs and drunk people are like literally like spilling things and that's why like djs are very careful like who the fuck they let on stage it's like we're like big time and i'm just like people really don't understand that six grand to a dj <laughs> like i'm not you know what i mean i'm not diplo out here getting all this yeah. money so i'll be like this it's a huge setback because like i Obviously, for independent artists, you got to use money on everything under the sun. Like you got to pay for everything yourself. So when you see some idiot that's like you're basically playing for, like you're playing for these people to have a good time, and they just don't regard your equipment as that something important. It's like, what the hell, man? Yeah, we uh, my 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 friends throw events at a warehouse, and like I promote for them and stuff. And um, you know they they had uh they had this house teacher come by and whatever. So and we have RX twos in the house um my buddy was like oh we can't like let them see this like we gotta have like actual cdj so they rented out cdj's from one of the people that are part of the dj collective and you know the guy was like 
um he's like oh, i don't know like you like you guys gotta be very careful with these like i can't risk anything happening you know, i'm like yep. I, I get it man that's his baby <laughs> like you guys no it's it's crazy and honestly if you have an rx and that's like for dj if you have an rx2 or now an rx3 like that's literally to learn on cdjs it's yeah. pretty close to those rx3s like, are pretty nice yeah and they're, it's like it's close enough and it's like fam like it, it, you're, if you're only using two tracks like if you use the rx2 or rx3 you're going to be fine. It's a way better investment. You can get a case for it. It's, mm-hmm. You can get it for wheels. It's like any DJ that's trying to get CDJs and you're like hesitant on 6K, look into the RX 2 or 3 with a case and that's probably going to be just enough you need. Yeah, man. It's uh, uh You know, it's funny because you mentioned like the guitar center store and I just had a DJ uh, a couple podcasts ago telling me how like it's super, super awesome story, man. When I was listening to it, it was like he started off DJing like learning by mm-hmm. going to the guitar center every day for one yeah. hour every day until he figured out how to DJ. And now this guy's like playing at EDC. Yeah. I mean, that's the grind. I mean, literally if some people don't have six K, like mm-hmm. I open up a credit card to get this stuff and I bust my ass to pay it off. But looking back, I mean, I really didn't need to do that. So if, I mean, if the R, I don't know if the RX2 was even out by the time I did that, but if you just get the RX2 or RX3, it's similar in- interface. So even then when you start getting to the CDJ level, you won't be shell shocked. You'll be like, all right, this looks familiar. And then you start getting comfortable. And then, or if you just, what you said, like go to like your local music store that has them and just practice, like they're going to sit there anyway. So mm-hmm. just, um, you know, can I practice on these? I'm, and then lie to them be like, oh, I might buy these. I just want to test these out. And they come back five days in a row. Like, oh, I'm still testing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really need like, you know, it's whatever. You could always like rent them out too. Just like grind for a month, you know, and, yeah. uh, I, you know, yeah. I, you, you know, it's funny. I was, I was, I put a video out on TikTok, which I just, I literally had never like put your name on TikTok. So I just added you. <laughs> but, oh, thank uh, you. Thank yeah. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I just did like a second ago, but it reminded me of this TikTok that I put up. I was like, I was, I was messing with the RX2s. So I'm like, oh, I just got an RX2. I'm going to learn how to DG so I could do a back to back with John Summit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, yo, TikTok, by the way crazy crazy app for independent artists like Mm -hmm. oh my god like that is something that i still need to get better at but like that literally helped me a lot i did this like res mashup of uh my neck my back and edge and Mm -hmm. it got it like blew up a little bit like res saw it she she liked it i was and it just like helped me out so much getting like a whole new audience of like heavy you know obviously res is more on the heavier side and then it's just like little quick mashup and then girls were just loving it and i was like this is what it's about and without tiktok that algorithm is so friendly for independence. Like I just can't express enough how important it is. Yeah. There's so many DJs on there that have been booked at like beyond wonderland, like EDC, yep. like because of TikTok. it's like, you know, Crazy. they got, they got big. They now like they're touring and I'm like, bro, you got TikTok to thank for that. It's so crazy that I, that TikTok just came out of nowhere and was like, hey, if you want to be famous, just fucking join the app. <laughs> Great. Let's fucking do it. Because yeah. it's not controlled by like top influencers. It's not based on like popularity. It's based on if people like your stuff. And yeah. what a better way for independence. Like you basically cut through so many of the typical gatekeepers in the industry. And it's yeah. like, no one can control your access. And yeah, yeah I, I mean, I still have to work. I'm probably going to, starting tomorrow do like my mashup monday series and then i do like t-shirt tuesdays where like people can submit like or if you text this number like i'll pick a random winner for t-shirts i like the giving away merch is probably something that i have seen successful to in my because like i actually have like my own printer presser that right there i'm telling you and i i I forget what episode we talked about it but i was uh no no, i don't think i talked about an episode i was talking to my roommate about it because Mm -hmm. He just started a company and I told, you know, he was kind of curious. So I kind of like um, was giving like the tips and tricks on like how I grew my brand and stuff like that. And I told him, honestly, man, it takes money to make money and it takes money to invest in yourself because no one's going to do it for you. So, you know, I have invested so much money on merch and like just mm-hmm. stuff to give away, stickers to give away. That's just not cheap. And I'm not planning on selling that shit. I'm planning on giving it away because what a better way to market yourself than giving people free shit, you know? Oh, to- yeah. I mean, I I had I used I used to buy like you know stockpiles of shirts and then I'm like okay like let me just start making my own shirts and I'll have like my own like you know machines and stuff. Right. So I learned from like basically being at college, learning that all these companies like I know that Vineyard Vine started by just giving away free stuff at colleges. Like all these other big brands just come in, give a shit ton of free stuff to college kids, and then as long as they keep building their own brand, college kids have that name recognition. Like, Oh, I've had this shirt before, blah, blah. And then that's kind of like my main demographic right now is the college, like 
outlet. And so Dude. free shirt, like that's the one thing college kids love eating up is just free shit. Dude, you're honestly giving me like a crazy idea now. And I'm like, I'm thinking about like using college now because like, you know, how they do like those tailgates, right? Now I'm thinking like, exactly. bro, I should have a, I should have like a, like a tailgate area and just fucking um, do a podcast outside and yeah. literally hand out free Festi Hub podcast shirts and be like, oh my it's God. easy. And then, and then you can probably take it to like, you see, you know, that buzz off that pop off and take it to like festivals. Cause I know mm-hmm. a lot of other festivals in the hip hop world have like podcast booths where the podcasts that are relevant to like hip hop discussions or mm-hmm. cultural discussions are now at the festival. So like, imagine, I don't know if they, I'm not sure if they do this at EDC or not. Like it's like at EDC or Wonderland Tomorrowland, like basically have a DJ lineup mm-hmm. and then under it be like podcast lineup. And then, so when people go there, if it's like an off time or just they're waiting for their artists, they can hop over and just hear like, artists talk to live podcasters and be like wow so not only am i getting the music experience but i get to actually see these people more of like a human level and like actually hear what you know, their thoughts and, and, are. and that's hard to kind of throw that idea at insomniac maybe like smaller festivals because insomniac right. has their own podcast and stuff like that i'd be like uh no we'll take we'll take thank you for the idea i will take it over from here <laughs> you know yeah. like, that fucks me over like great like, of course right and that's barrier. why yeah you're right they would have to be smaller independent festivals that aren't so like clicked up already yep. but I mean, it's just like the podcast world is just booming, like for the past like five years, just like literally booming out of control of like people that can just do whatever they want just by talking to people, yeah. like people who are off talking and like you literally can sell out different venues like you're an artist, but all you're doing is sitting down and talking to other guests Dude, or just doing like your own stuff. I, I am so happy that I that I decided to tap into this market because like I'm not a DJ man and I'm like I I don't plan on being a DJ. I want to learn how to DJ just so that like if you're using like CDJs and you don't know what some of these buttons do, I can help you. That's it. That's like one thing. Cause I plan on throwing events later on in the future. And I want to be able to sure, like make sure like the DJs that are using my stuff are able to know how to, and that I know how to, you know, can't throw right. an event and then not know how your equipment works. Um, yeah. That's the only reason that as far as like DJ, I want to go to. So I was like, you know, I wanted to be something bigger than an influencer. I want to be bigger than a content creator, like in that sense. And I was like, I'm going to tap into this fucking market, bro. And yep. And I want a couple of things to come out of it, right? I want to like make not only more friends, but I want to meet DJs like yourself, you know? Like we've never talked. This is like, you know. I know. This is crazy. I've been following for them for over like a year and a half to two years. And I'm just like, yeah, sure. I'll hop on a podcast. <laughs> no problem. I'm like, why not? Like we're just out here just kicking it because that's the thing with being so on social media so much is you connect with so many people that you, odds are you're probably, you know, unfortunately for a lot of people, not going to meet these people in real life. So, through these different avenues like this one i can actually talk to you i can share my story i can hear your story yeah, man. it's just that's why especially in this community of edm it's like so now there is a there is obviously non-friendlier side but in my experience so far really friendlier side of a lot of like in real life people are like really friendly and like want to actually hear you and your story yeah. and where you're trying to go and that's really it's really cool especially being around different kind of cultures different kind of music it's like having a welcoming one and then liking it and then trying to be in it and trying to thrive in it. It's very comforting to know that now obviously Twitter can have like a dark space of EDM Twitter, mm-hmm. where it's just like, you know, a lot of times. I don't, I don't do, I don't do Twitter. I don't know if you're on Twitter, but I try to. No, I, like am. I follow, I follow like the, all the guys, people that freak out over stuff, but like in yeah. real life, in my experience that the people in real life are actually really cool down to earth and actually want to hear you out. Yeah. I, I stopped using Twitter. I oh, actually have never used Twitter. I, you know, as, as, someone who's like trying to grow um you know you obviously have every platform i don't i don't do twitter twitter, uh, twitter is like such like a big pros big cons type of world it's like it's funny as hell twitter can be so but it's ruthless and so mm-hmm. it's like with ruthlessness you get really negative stuff and then really positive stuff with like it's just i don't know it's, it, i wouldn't i don't blame you for not going to twitter because it, it is kind of it can get crazy on there but you know, it could be good as well. It really just depends on, you know, who you're trying to market to and like making sure that you're not doing anything stupid on there and just mm-hmm. like trying to promote your stuff. And there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people trying to tear you down, but do you, do you have haters? Do you get them? Yeah. I mean, there was, so being in, from Philly, there's like mm-hmm. a couple of people in the city that I know that like try and like a lot of it's crazy. Everyone who does want to talk down or like, or hate on someone doesn't even, I've never met them. I don't know them. And that's kind of like a similar theme with a lot of other people I talk to is their biggest critiquers or haters are like 
people they never met. So that's a very odd thing to me because I just don't, I'm like so focused on what I have to do that I don't even think about like other people in a negative, yeah. like other people in my field in negative light. I look at other people in my field like, oh, what is he doing? Like, what is, like, is that working? How can I use it for myself? It's not, I'm not thinking of like, oh, fuck this guy. It's like so much wasted energy. Because you're busy. You you're, you yeah. have a one track mind and that's uh, be successful. I'm sorry. You're not, I don't, I, like, I, you know, how do you do that? You collab with other people. So when you yeah. realize that you, when it takes collabs to get to certain areas, you try not mm-hmm. to make enemies with those people. That, that, that right. makes no sense. It's and people can, people can read when other people are haters, right? It's like if, if like you're hanging out in a room and then you're with another DJ and you pull up your phone, like, oh, look at this motherfucker. Like, fuck them, blah, blah, blah. DJ's like, do you know him? Like, what are you, what are you talking <laughs> about? Like, why, like, what did he do to you? And it's just like, you don't want to have negative energy surrounding your name or brand. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's just terrible. I don't, I get it. Like this space can be competitive, like in the DJ producer world, especially when you're in the same genre, yeah. even like podcasters, like having like a similar demographic with another podcast. Well, might- luckily, luckily uh, the EDM podcast scene is very small as of right now, maybe in the future, it'll be a little more competitive and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing I can relate to is like when driving rays were a thing, um, mm-hmm. being an influencer was competitive. So, uh, they would only give oh, about yeah. Like 10. Yeah, that's, yeah. I can definitely see that. So versus giving out a hundred festival tickets, they were only giving out 10 drive-in tickets. So all us like influencers were like basically fighting for those 10 tickets. And it's like, it wow. was like, yeah, like, like who could talk shit about who so they don't get that ticket. You know what I mean? It, it was pretty Yeah. Bad. It, it's just, it, it honestly, when you have negative energy or feelings towards somebody, it just wastes time on you working on yourself. And it's like, so counterproductive and it's going to keep you where you're at and that's why like when i hear of like different people saying stuff i'm just like i just question myself why and then it's that's it i'm just like why would they say that and then just keep going because i don't the, and the more you feed into it the more it grows so i just like let it slide i'm like all right yeah. whatever i i like, have noticed it a lot more with like the djs though and it's like i hang out with some djs and like on our off time we're just out you know having a barbecue whatever and like you get some of the djs are like yeah, we, we, we talk about uh, we talk about music while we're hanging out because I mean EDM when, when you're in our like our field when we're this deep into it um, we talk about it and are like just hanging out because it's what we we eat live breathe EDM right and so, it's, yeah morning to night that's like what I'm doing I'm either working on the, like trying like the media corporate stuff or or like the other stuff I work with or I'm doing full time DJ music production slash shirt making mm-hmm. slash content creation it's like that time of hating on somebody is not in my schedule. I can't, <laughs> I can't fit it anywhere. So I, don't, I can't do it. Well, some people do, right? And it's because they don't get the, they don't get the perks. The, you know. So I had one DJ one time actually tell me he was like, "Why do you get free festival tickets? I don't understand." I'm like, "Well, like I'm doing like constant, honestly, like com- like constant promotions. I get off, I do a 12 hour shift at work, and for the next two hours, I'm promoting festivals. Like, uh, you know, that's what I like. I don't have a free time. I'm constantly like looking right. at all my checklists of promotional stuff I have to do for the day, and I send them all out, and I get a free festival to go. And this guy was like, oh, but like, I'm signed up. I have like a song with Subsidia, this and this. I should be getting these free tickets. I'm like, one, no, you don't. I checked. <laughs> I checked. <laughs> so I checked. You, you don't have to let it kick up, my guy. You know? <laughs> And two, why the fuck would they give you a free festival ticket? Like, if you want a free one, tell the DJ that's playing your song to give it to you. Yeah, honestly. And that's why, And again, a lot of a lot of the weird comments or hatred and like even with like the bigger DJs is lack of knowledge of what goes in to make something happen. So like other DJs are like, oh, like how is how is Doss like going over? Like, how's he getting booked all these places? Blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, like. I've been building a base for almost like 10 years. Like I've been They don't doing... see that shit. They don't see that shit. They just saw yeah, you go now. Like I have a whole lighting production that I have to pay for. And I try and like work out the call. Like I literally have to learn how to put on events and sell tickets by myself. Like I literally have a full like video team that I have. I'm, I'm like, I have a live mascot come out. Like it's like a whole moving production. It's like, I, I'm not just a person who comes in and plays songs for two hours. I'm trying to give people a literal show experience. Like, which, which well, kudos to you though, because a lot of people don't even do that. It, they, they only play. Right. So right. like, I feel like you are just giving, I mean, you're giving your all, honestly, that's a lot of stuff to learn and a lot of stuff to kind of like, Oh yeah. I mean, that's it. Man, my, my whole career has been like probably mostly failures, but it's more just like looking uh, at it. I mean, I mean, honestly, it's all paid off, man. I think everything happens for a reason. Right. I was oh, literally, of course. 
I was just showing my roommate because I, he, you know, he was like, "Oh, I thought your four p.m. canceled." Like, no, 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 I filled it in with this guy. And I was showing me readers. I was like, you know, he was like fanboying you while I was showing him. He's like, he's like, dude, whoever did his recap is sick. Like, that's a yeah. Sick I mean, recap. honestly, that and that even the recaps, right? So my guys, so what we do is we, so we have the show and then we go back to the hotel and we don't sleep. We sit at the computer get all the clips, photos and whatever. And I make the mashup uh, like probably the night before, like weeks before, or use my original song for it. So we know what mm-hmm. songs are going in. We have drone footage of the whole area, like try and make it spicier. And then we just basically go through the clips together, finish it out. And then by the time the morning the sun rises, that video is already out. And it's like done, completed post in the morning. And people think that, you know, we just have the show party, and then just like a video just magically appears mm-hmm. and all oh, it looks lit. But like, we don't sleep after shows. Like the show is like the first 50%. Like yeah. after all that's done, now we got to like really know how to recap it right. Because in my experience, I want to get people to know that, yo, you missed out on a show last night. Uh-huh, like, yeah, oh, exactly. So like bro. this, this shit went down and this is the experience that I'm trying to give you guys. And, and it's just like, I'm trying to tell the world like, yo, this is a yeah. movement and it's going to keep going. And it's I mean, like, I'm going to, I mean, we're probably out. honestly after showing like my roommate, Ollie, like those recasts, like, I think we're like in the mindset, like we got to visit you. Cause I, I was showing you the, the video. Point. I was showing you the video and he's like, bro, why are there so many fucking bitches, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about that. That, I mean, honestly, <laughs> well, I, well you, got, you got who did the, who, the guy who like does the videography or whatever, man, he was literally just grabbing all the girls and like, you know, oh, yeah. that's well, part he, of like yeah. the recast, bro. You got to know your audience, bro. He's like, he was capturing the good moments. You know what I mean? Of course. And it's crazy. Cause like he can't even put on a lot of stuff that would definitely get taken down. Instagram. <laughs> it's just like, we had to make it, we usually have to dial down like all the footage that we really have. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of gets crazy. There was some twerk but... video. To- there was like twerking parts and stuff. And it stopped yeah. with this girl twerking. And it said on there, you know how like it stops and goes, do you want to keep watching? He goes, bro, click, keep watching. We got to see this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. We, um, yeah, there's a lot of parts we can't put in there, but luckily we get not a lot of like acceptable Instagram moments that we can mm. put together. But also the the mascot. So like I saw like Dead Mouse and like Rez has the glasses mm. and Marshmallow obviously and Steve Aoki has the cake. And then like I looked at the big guys and I was like, all right, so a lot of them have like this kind of separate thing that's a part of their show, whether yeah. it's an actual thing on them or a separate event. Just, so just like, no, hey, it, it, it is. It's, it's a thing right yeah. and like i don't know how else to describe it because it, it is like a gimmick but it, like, a gimmick to me doesn't do justice to the power that it has because yeah. a gimmick to me is like a cheap plastic toy that breaks in a week where if it's a staple of their career then mm-hmm. obviously it's more than just a gimmick like rez still has those glasses for a reason yeah. like dead mount like has the like marshmallow has it for a reason but it's also like being known for something right so like i don't know if you ever listened to like heart style but yeah. um you know, Lil Texas plays naked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't yeah. know that, then you're really not like a fan, right? So like, you yeah. know, you're going to see a, a little Texas show. He's probably going to go on stage wearing nothing but a cowboy hat covering his junk. Yeah. And that's, I, now listen, so the, my my thing was, I need to do something that I still feel genuine in. Because I'm mm-hmm. not trying to put on like a mask just for the yeah, hype. Yeah, you yeah. feel right to me. And I'm not going out there naked. So I have to like find something <laughs> that is like, that I fuck with that I like, but also something that people like. So mm-hmm. I was like, I, I couldn't figure it out. And then one of my a camera guy's friends, it was like a Halloween party. He's like, yo, can I wear this to the show? It was like a whole bear suit. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I might as well give you like a big ass DOS shirt and just come out as my mascot. And that's literally the first thing when he sent me pictures, like that's the first thing that happened. And then ever since then, he's been on tours with me. And I was like, he's so, so who is he? He literally... I can't give out his name, but he is, <laughs> my, he is my photo guy. Is like one of his good friends growing up. And I started to know him just through this journey. Okay. And he's, a, he's a funny guy. Uh, he, I will say he kind of looks like the bear costume. Like he <laughs> kind of fills out the bear costume pretty surprisingly well. Yeah. So if you ever see me with someone that looks like, hey, he kind of has a <laughs> shape of boss bear. It's him. So if you ever see me out, say what's up. You guys can meet him. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely cool. He's getting better. It's kind of hard, too, because, like, you got to always have energy. Sometimes mm-hmm. it sets, like, two, two and a half hours, and, like, there's no break, and it gets hot in there. Oh, so, yeah, fucking like, does. Luckily, you you're in Philly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, now it's cold as hell. But, like, as we, as we hopefully we move to, like, the south and the west, it's, like, 
you got to come out ready to go, man. Mm -hmm. And like constant energy. And a lot of my set is high BPM and I do mix in hard styles. So it's like, you're going to be really up. And it's funny. A lot of more people take pictures with the DOS bear than me. More people want to meet the DOS bear than me. People give me their phones to take pictures of them with the bear. You want to know why though, right? I am because, um, in, in like, and you know, we we're talking about like haters and stuff like that, whatever, right? But we're also talking about like people who don't want to make put you in a pedestal. Um, a lot of people are afraid to take pictures with like a DJ, an influencer, a podcaster without seeming like a fanboy, fangirl, right? But how easy is it to just ask a fucking bear? You know what I mean? So it's like, because that's basically what it's for. Like people are used to mascots. People yeah, are used exactly. to like, you know, being comfortable with them. So that's why it definitely, you're right. It does help break that barrier. And I think it makes people after they get the picture like, more willing to like kind of mentally invest in what I have going mm -hmm. on. Like, Oh, that was fun. That was a fun show, fun mascots that I've never seen before. And it's like, it's lit. You know, I get, I get an insane amount of DMS when I go to like festivals and stuff of people saying, Hey, like um, I wanted, I saw you at the festival. I didn't want to take a picture. Cause you look really busy. You look like you were like in the middle of a bunch of, you know, you were doing a meetup, you were talking to people and that bear, his literal job is to take pictures of people. So like, they don't feel like, you know oh intimidating and like even kids like kids like so at last so thon was like you know kids that are recovering from cancer and all that stuff and they want to take pictures with the bear right away like to, yeah to yeah someone, like more of a stranger it's like oh he's like a you know like a big dj up there i'm like a little nervous but the bear it's like they run right up to him then i'm the one taking the picture and i'm yeah. just like this bear is more famous <laughs> than i am like this is crazy so it, it's been working yeah, that's that it was really cool. I mean, just coming up with that idea, just the, how the idea got formed. I mean, it's super cool. And now you have like, you know, like a, a thing, right? So, yeah, um, that, like, my thing is to make the best show, like, besides making the best music and people can come off in the music alone, which is obviously like people that just focus on that. It's obviously, yeah, it's a good show if you have your good music. I'm just trying to, I enjoy investing in my show. Like, mm -hmm. I personally enjoy it. I personally will break even and not make as much money if that means I can pour more money into the live show because just i love doing it and i just firmly believe that the more you invest in your show for the people the more the people will invest in you back so i just love doing it and hopefully you know as i continue to like get bigger and get mm -hmm. like more music out and more of a reach i can then dump more money into it and then really give people like damn that was a crazy ass show something i've never seen before what's up with uh just throwing a, a whole different subject but what is up with your hair <laughs> what, what made you what made you style your hair the way you're styling it now so Okay, this is actually pretty funny. So <laughs> when I was in college, I had like the same haircut for like sophomore year of college on. But okay. funny part was before the pandemic, I have a part right here. And the same barber I kept going to kept not on purpose, but kept moving the part over more and more and more and more and more. And then during the pandemic, I kind of looked in the mirror. I was like, this thing's going <laughs> to cross the middle of my head. <laughs> Like, like this thing really like is really like kind of like a semi like weird part mohawk. It's yeah, like, my barber just fucked me up. <laughs> yeah, basically my barber's been fucking me up for like like years, and I'm just like, it, it, when the thing is though, when you keep going back, it's it's so subtle that you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. So you just like keep going, like it just keeps going, go 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 go. But then when you don't have any shows for months, you start looking at yourself like. Oh, I was tripping. This is this has to stop. Like I'm, this is I'm bugging right now. So after the during the pandemic, I'm just growing all of it out, and I yeah. was like, "Yo, this can never happen again." So uh, hopefully, this doesn't keep moving. I think I think it's been on this kind of side, the same level for for months now. Like, <laughs> I hopefully it doesn't keep moving in the middle. I mean, if you do, that's your thing. <laughs> you can pull in a whole Skrillex move. <laughs> I was the thing is, I was like so comfortable looking at it. I was subconsciously pulling it off for myself and then some some of my close friends were making fun of me for i thought it was like not a big deal but then looking back on some pictures because i have some pictures of shows after the pandemic and before i'm like that was really different like that hair was really in the middle of my head and i gotta just make sure i'm in more of a reality check now with my barbers no yeah i, I that's actually it's funny because that's the exact same things has happened to me before i used to have a part right here and i had a part here because i i had a an accident and i ended up getting a huge scar i'm like oh just put the part right there but then mm -hmm. they kept moving and like it was no longer on the scar then i had two parts i'm like <laughs> <laughs> they were just like racing straight all yeah. the way. No. it gets crazy and like 
it's just weird because I'm obviously I'm so consumed with like, you know, making sure all my shit's good for the mm-hmm. DJ side and like, and like the touring side. And I just like the haircut's like the last thing I really worry about. I just like go in, get it when I think yeah. I need it and then go out. But man, the pandemic really just, it, it made me self-reflect on a lot. And the haircut was definitely one of them. So I think now going forward, we got that problem solved. Hopefully. I was trying to get a haircut before this podcast. Just I want to look fresh, you know. <laughs> Got to look fresh for my boy, you know. Um, no, you look fine. Yeah, I, I, honestly, <laughs> like I'm more just like as long as the sides look cool. Like I can. This is basically I've had the same haircut for about like eight years now. So this literally just happens like out of the shower. I dry and it just goes right to this form. So I, I nope. used to wear gel, and mm-hmm. maybe I'm just self conscious or whatever because like I'm 30 now and. <laughs> I'm like, is my hair receding? <laughs> you know, oh, thinking no. that way. Oh, I'm God. like, I'm like, I'm gonna I stop. Know. I'm like, is it my hair thinning? Am I losing hair? So you start questioning things that you didn't question before, just because, like, you know, with age, you're just like mm-hmm. worried. I'm like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to be one of those guys. I um, know you start really start bugging out, and you start really overanalyzing. And the more you probably touch your hair, mess up, the more you're like pulling it out almost. So like, it's like, like, why is my hair coming off? <laughs> I know it's like is something wrong with me. What? So, so I stopped. So I stopped using gel. But um, so I don't know if you know this, but like my, I, uh, I'm a surgical tech. So I, w- I always go to work super like nice, whatever. And I stopped, you know, basically putting on gel. And my coworkers think that I don't shower anymore because I don't not oh, like, God. you know. So they always be making jokes. They're like, well, like at least we showered today. I'm like, dude, I promise I showered. I'm oh just, my, that's messed up. I just oh don't my. know how to tell them I'm self conscious about my receding hairline that I probably yeah, do, don't like, have. The gel stuff to me is just like so much added money because like, and it's like it can get. I don't know. I used to gel, and I'm just like, this is. I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'm just gonna make sure I dry it the right way, and then just like luckily my hair is kind of gets thicker, so it just like stays there. Yeah, my so. hair, my my hair is super thick when it's um when it's not gel, but when it's gelled, it like it you could really like see like my scalp <laughs> because it like <laughs> clumps up together. I'm super self conscious. No, you no, you look. You listen, man, it's fine. Don't worry about it. The more it's just gonna make it. It's going to make a process, you know, go faster, worry about your hair. Just let it rock. I'm just going to go bald. I mean, that's going to be my <laughs> thing, my thing. Frisky hug, the bald guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, what's uh, what, what, what you got going on, man? What's uh, some of the next stuff, uh, next projects you got going on? Any new releases? Yeah. So right now I'm working on a four house or four track Spanish house EP. So Wait, my last Spanish couple- house. Yeah, so that's actually something I've been trying to dabble more into. So I made a uh, Spanish house song, my last release with uh, a DJ out of Philly, Ciroc, and a singer out of New York, Elandria. And uh, it was called Fantasia. It's nice. I love it. And it kind of made me feel like I, the more, because being abroad in Europe is a big Latin uh, Mm -hmm. music. So I listen to Latin all the time in the clubs, stuff like that. So what I would do is try to find Latin songs, make house edits, or like get house remixes online. Yeah. It just goes super hard. And like, the more I get into it, the more I like it. And it's just, I want to create now just kind of my own as I mix in when I go over there and mix in my own music and just get it out there. And that's what I'm basically working on. And that's like the only EP I'm really working on. Other Others just like singles I have in the works and like my next power hour, which is my hour mix I usually do with the kind of like a set would sound like for people that never heard them before. So that's power hour five is coming out, hopefully March, trying to get three out this year. So basically just like more mixes, more original music, um, more in the house side. I'm waiting to get in the more heavy, like future based side, probably later in the year. Um, but yeah, it's just like that and touring. Uh, I have on this tour right now. The next one is probably going to be probably around like August because I'm trying to work out West and more South. I'm trying to network as I can to try and get more out there. Cause I just know that the energy, especially for like house is like crazy in Arizona and LA right now in Miami. So like, yeah, I'm LA, LA is huge, man. LA is huge. I mean, Miami, obviously, but, uh, yeah. you know, I'm trying like- to get over there. I'm trying to see like, you know, if I can try and network more and then see, get some shows out there, try and get some sort of base down there and go from yeah. there. I mean, you fucking move to Florida, bro. You'll be booked every fucking day. Like there's huge yeah. on house here, dude. So I came mm-hmm. to Florida you know to like because I, I was living in colorado you know base capital um and i came to florida and huge like change of scenery i'm like it's just nothing but house and techno everywhere i go i'm like all right every like yesterday i went to a bass show in tampa so i had to drive a little out, out of my way to go get to it but like you'll never see like bass here normally it's very it's like super yeah. heavy and that's why like the more the more i've noticed is that subgenres take over cities so mm-hmm. yeah. that's why going forward i'm trying to really not be inside a certain you know as much as i can inside a certain label or 
genre like even with the college stuff the college stuff is great i just don't want to be forever as a college dj like yeah, don't, my... don't get known as a college dj <laughs> right so it's it's cool right now help me build a base and it's cool but obviously i have to branch off and that's what my next move is going to be and so that's why I, the more open my sets can be the more like less one genre specific they can be the more i can travel to other places that's like more of a base capital more of like a heavy city or more of a like a house city or it's just like i want to try to go as, as many cities as i can because my biggest thing is i'm worried more about the reach of my songs music mm -hmm. uh, content than the actual like dollars i'm getting because obviously you have to make a living but it's more making sure that i can get as much reach as possible like, i'll do a show with my whole team if i'm not making as much money just to make it worth to be in a city for the first time just because i'm trying to get that reach so yeah, that's why going forward, I'm trying to be very open with my genre, like production and just trying to hit as many corners of the world as I can. It's just funny that you mentioned like Spanish house because like my buddy's actually throwing an event next week, literally Spanish house, <laughs> like the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, it's growing. I'm serious, like, because I think Spanish music itself is growing. Obviously, house is huge. And it's like, eventually, I know Spanish house, I can listen to a whole set of it because it's just like, and I trust my taste. So I'm like, if I like this, I can mm -hmm. definitely try and replicate it in a way where I can make other people like it too, or at least like make it more comfortable, not like an entire set of Spanish house, but definitely just throw it in there. And I'd be like, Oh, people are like, Oh, what is this? Because it's all Latin music to its core is about moving. Like it's all about moving hips, moving feet. So add that with house, which is basically what it's supposed to yeah, do. And it's exactly. you know, two genres that fit perfectly in my mind. So it's got to make sure I can replicate it well in production. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, I mean, everyone's noticing. I mean, I'm, I, I first like kind of got into like the whole scenery being like Spanish and house and stuff like Deora was throwing out some like crazy mixes and stuff of like Spanish music. Um, when the whole like De La Mama song started coming out mm -hmm. and like now everyone's playing that. It's like, oh yep. shit, let's listen to more of this, you know? Yeah, um, Deora is like like the front lines of that stuff. Like he, yep. like without him, it's not even, I don't even think anywhere near the level if you listen to it right now. So like obviously you gotta let the pioneers like do their thing and then just like any other genre like make sure the big dudes like go as far as they can just follow as long as you make good stuff to behind them that you can take it anywhere you want like it's all about giving the people good music so i try my hardest like i'm not spanish obviously so what i try to do is work with other spanish like singers and then make sure that hey do you like this like if i play this would you like it because like i like it but i might be totally out of taste here i need you to really <laughs> let me know so that's why I like working with authentic like artists that are from the culture that can understand like what makes a good song in this kind of field is so important to me. All right, Dosk, man, it has been a pleasure. I'm so glad like you decided like uh, to join on this podcast, even though it was like last minute. Um, it, just, it was it was just great. Just showing my friend all this stuff about you, and I was like, oh shit, like you know what? Let me just get him on the podcast. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see if he's got the time, you know? Um, awesome. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah follow but, me at DJ Dosk. Uh, all music under Dosk, D-O-S-K. And then if you're on TikTok, Dosk Official, I'm there. Yeah, and I think you got a website too, right? DJDosk.com. You can get merch, show announcements. Uh, all my music's on there too. All the videos I've done, you can see past shows. And hit me up on there too. Hit me up wherever. <laughs> so it, it, fucking great having you man and then uh to all the viewers out there this episode is available on all major streaming platforms um but the video version will be on youtube so if you want to just see what we look like you know just hear you know, just just look at us in general or look at the haircuts <laughs> uh, you can uh, but like i said in every single episode i will catch y'all at the next one